Welcome to the predictive analytics regression and classification course. This is August to November semester of 2020. Unfortunately, this is there is a pandemic going on and so we cannot do it in person in the class, but this year, this semester we are doing it online course. So my plan is to upload each of the lecture on the YouTube and you can see the lectures at your own pace. So in the introduction, I would like to tell you that most of the material that I'm going to cover in this course, I have taken from mainly two books. One is by James Witten Hasty and Tip Shirani, an introduction to statistical learning with applications in R. Another book is Hasty Tip Shirani Friedman, Elements of Statistical Learning, Data Mining, Inference and Prediction. Now, this book is slightly at written for at the easier uh, at a beginner levels and this book is slightly at a higher advanced level so you try to have a read on both book and then send you can feel where you feel comfortable in which book and you just pick up but more or less i will i'm taking the material from these two books and effectively these books are written by the same group of people so predictive models regression classification comes into supervised learning now why we did a full course on regression and classification in our experience what we have seen that there are many many problems out uh, there which are not supervised learning which does not belong to supervised learning there are a lot of unsupervised learning techniques are there there are reinforcement learning techniques are there but in business in industry supervised learning and predictive analytics plays a very crucial role as you know this msc program in data science is mainly geared toward the people who are aspiring for corporate career for them it is being designed and we felt in business and industry predictive analytics plays a very crucial role hence we decided to have a full course on regression and classification and this is the reason a full course on supervised learning though you have a another course another core course is advanced machine learning where you will be learning uh, deep learning technique deep learning philosophy where deep learning is being used in the supervised learning it is being used in the unsupervised learning it is being used in the reinforcement learning and all those th issues will be discussed in the advanced machine learning course which will be offered by professor madhavan and me jointly in parallel to this course so we will focus on the in this course we will focus on more on a traditional statistical approach in towards predictive analytics or regression classification is in the uh, under the supervised learning umbrella i will start with a motivating example so given different features of a new prototype car can you predict the mileage or the miles per gallon of the car so what is suppose you imagine you working for an automobile company uh, in chennai or in detroit area of us or in germany there are lots of automobile companies and you are working for them and in these automobile companies there is a design division where they have a prototype car and the prototype car is ha, has defined okay whether it will be a you know 
front wheel driving or back wheel or you know like the, what will be the horsepower what will be the weight of the car all these engineering features can be diff, you know figured out at the design step of the prototype car as a you just have the design of the car but you don't uh, even have the prototype maybe but given the different features of the car can you estimate the miles per gallon because if unless you have a real prototype car and you put some gas on it or petrol in it and you make the car drive for few hundred miles or thousands miles and then only you can get a sense that okay what is the mileage of that car or how many miles gal miles it require it can go in one gallon of gasoline so here is a data set so which uh, suppose it says that you know uh, it's a one particular model it's a Mazda RX4 who which has a miles per gallon 21 it's a six cylinder car 160 displacement horsepower similarly uh, there is another variant which is also have the similar thing but there is another car which is a Datsun 710 which has a different miles per gallon and then four, it's a four cylinder car it's a different variant and eight displacement less horsepower Hornet 4 drive so there is like you know different different models of car their engineering features are given and it is various miles per gallon is also known now you have a prototype car the prototype cars your engineers have defined okay it's a four cylinder car it is going to have 120 displacement horsepower is going to be 100 now the question is given these features engineering features can you say something about the miles per gallon can you predict the or estimate the miles per gallon so this is a very typical predictive analytics problem and by doing these exercise you can solve many many uh, problems you can save a lot of money because now before even making the first prototype car you can get a good estimate of the miles per gallon if you have that estimate then you can make a decision whether even to make the prototype car or not and you know put it into the car show and get a feelings whether the people like it or not another example which is uh, you can often uh, face this that's given a credit history and other features of a loan applicant a bank manager wants to predict if the loan applicant would be a good or bad loan result into a good loan or bad loan if it is a good loan then you would like to have the business but if it is a bad loan then it's a huge loss it could be a huge loss for the bank so you have to make a binary decision kind of situation whether to approve the loan or the reject the loan so this is also comes under the supervised learning technique so how do before even we move on one big question that many student faces and many people faces that how to identify if a problem is a predictive analytics problem and here is uh, I would not say that you know it is the way to figure out the uh, predict whether a problem is a predictive analytics way a problem but I would say this technique works very worked very nicely for me and I have found that you know it's generally work for others also you can typically you can first when you are having a discussion with client or your you know supervisor or your design department or anybody or your collaborator in another department of your university the you can first question you can 
tell them or you can ask them that what is your story tell me a story about your problem you try to from that and typically people say a lot of things and from that conversation you try to figure out whether they want to predict anything that is a one good start if you are not so sure, sure then you can ask a direct question to your client or collaborator do you want to predict something if the answer is yes then ask which variable you want to predict do you want to predict the you know whether uh, next year it is going to be a draw year whether you want to predict the you know the quality of the product or something you know then you check if the variable that they want to predict that is available in the database because sometimes they want to predict something but that variable is not really available in the database rather they want to and they want to use some kind of proxy variable to predict another thing for example in psychology they want to people want to predict you know the you know attitude of a person but how do you define attitude whether a person has a good work ethic how do you define work ethic you cannot really measure the work ethics of a person so they come up with different kind of measures and from the proxy variables they will ask to fill up a survey and from that survey they can try to come up with a score and that score will be some kind of representative of work ethics or attitude or something you know so you have to be very cautious whether the variable is available in the database or not so if it is if the variable is available then yes it's a straightforward predictive analytics problem but if it is not available and your collaborator wants to use a proxy variable then you have to be a bit careful whether that variable is the right variable uh, or that proxy is a right proxy or not then an another added layer gets added to the problem in a typical supervised learning we all know that there is we are labeling of the data for if you uh, have a piece of a, an equipment which have data point labeled either f fail or it runs and then you want to predict y as a function of x and you want to learn effectively the function and given the x the, all the features you want to predict the y this this is the typical problem and if the y is a continuous variable for example income blood pressure distance these are continuous variable then it's a regression problem and if the y is a categorical of the label variable say species type color class then it's typically classification problem if it is a binary classification then it's a typical binary classification problem if it has some different type of labels like color or you know species type then it's a multi class classification problem typical quantitative response you will see or the data set that you will see will have n plus m many responses and what strategy people use in the machine learning or in the predictive analytics world they try to split the data into two and one part they use as a trained data and the other part they use as a test data okay and like here we can use this to train our model like to estimate the parameters of the model and then and estimate the parameters of the algorithms and then you use this test data to predict these y values now you know the original y values and compare with the original y values 
So this is typical for um, machine learning or predictive analytics or regression classification kind of problems. Same with the, we will do it with the categorical variables as well. Our measures will be different, like, you know, if you are using a quantitative response, then typically we use um, some kind of mean square error or root mean square error to uh, verify whether the model is doing it a good job. But if it is a classification kind of problem, then we use some kind of accuracy or, you know, ROC curve kind of thing to uh, identify whether the algorithm is doing is a good job in the test data set. In the, we will, in now we will initiate the discussion on the regression in the next part of this lecture. Please continue.